Hi, in this video we will talk about viral vaccine production based in cell culture techniques. First, we need to define what a vaccine is. A vaccine is an attenuated or inactivated infectious agent that delivers antigenic structures resulting in the stimulation of the immune system. The World Health Organization recommends a series of vaccines that deliver partial or complete immunization to certain infectious agents. This chart explains how vaccines should be applied and in what period in human development they should be administered. The most common ones are hepatitis B, polio and measles, but this depends strictly on regulations depending of the countries. According to Zagarpa, 20% of total rabies vaccines and 10% against tuberculosis are produced in Mexico. UNAM is currently at the first phase of animal testing for vaccine development against SARS-CoV-2. Mexican medicine researchers are developing SARS-CoV-2 vaccine with recombinant DNA technology and also a GMO tomato uh, is a possible candidate for edible vaccine for COVID-19, which is being developed by Daniel Garza from UANL and colleagues using bioinformatics and genetic engineering. Since the 1940s, viral vaccines have been produced in embryonated chicken eggs to replicate viruses, although the production is limited by their availability. Then, in 1950s, primary cells were used as substrates to produce virus, and in 1960s, continuous cell lines were considered suitable hosts to produce human vaccines. Until 1977, the first production was achieved, enabling infection in a closed bioreactor system to ensure sterility. The first step to produce a vaccine is to define how it will interact with a specific host cell to create the immunity we want to achieve. To identify the vaccine type, it is important to consider the cell substrate and production process, like the fire reactor. Moreover, vaccines types are defined by the component obtaining the immune response. These components can be live attenuated viruses, inactivated viruses, subunits, viral vectors, or recombinant viral particles. Live attenuated vaccines require lower concentrations of immunogens. An inactivated vaccine is when the whole virus is chemically inactivated and has a high immunogenicity level. The recombinant vector vaccine express the viral antigens, while the recombinant subunit vaccine is for the expression of viral genes to produce viral proteins. And the subunit vaccine's principle is that the live viruses are disrupted by detergents and purified. We must consider that viruses with a high mutation rate are not adequate. To manufacture viral vaccines, the supply of eggs or cultivation of cells are involved. Then the virus is subjected to specific replication in cultivation vessels. For example, modified vaccina Ankara and VA virus in continuous cell lines remains attached to the cell membrane and requires cell to cell contact to spread infection. A new genotype of MVA virus propagates in a single suspended avian cell culture facilitating manufacturing process. Rotavirus, influenza virus, or Sendai virus require protest treatment to increase their ineffectivity in cell culture, whereas others have demands like the hosts. Mink enteritis virus, MEV, multiplies in mitotic cells, while influenza virus only binds to cells with receptors that contain sialic acid residues. Human animal cell substrates are used for whole virus replication. Uh, these cell lines employ primary culture of chicken embryo fibroblasts. The production capacity depends on the supply of embryonated eggs, which could have avian pathogens. Primary monkey cells are also used to make human vaccines, although they may contain pathogens. 
Continuous cell lines are the preferred substrates in cell-based manufacturing processes. Mass commercial virus production rely on continuous cell lines, maintain an encouraged dependent growth. Human cell lines and avian cell lines are adapted to grow in suspension, facilitating cultivation of cells and scale up in vaccine production. Human and higher animal cells require many enriched with fetal calf serum, increasing batch to batch variations and involves the risk of introducing advantageous agents. Media development enable the cultivation of certain cells in serum free media, achieving better yields. Insect cell substrates are employed in recombinant antigen and virus like particle production. Insect cell cultures for human recombinant vaccine manufacturing is a strategy to create vaccines like Cervarix and Flubok. Insect cells are easily cultivating in suspension cultures using serum-free media, a substrate that fulfills criteria for vaccine development. Using cell lines like SF9, SF21 and H5 cells are infected with baculoviruses that carry the heterologous genes of the desired antigens. They work as viral vectors for recombinant protein expression, replicating inside infected insect cells. Thus, the formation of new baculovirus particles is important for processing VLP vaccines. Recombinant vaccine production doesn't involve viral infection. Stably modified H5 cells have been developed for Japanese encephalitis vaccine production. A drawback of insect cells is the difficulty to express membrane proteins and secreted glycoproteins. Also, insect cells cannot synthesize glycan structures, however, glycosylated vaccine candidates produced in insect cells like dengue virus have obtained an antibody response. Strategies are applied to avoid virus or antigen degradation, which is caused by the release of cellular proteases after lysis, thus operation modes retaining cells or viruses while removing proteases are available. If the virus or antigen is produced, multiple steps improve the process. After harvesting, clarification is performed by filtration. The advantages of vaccine manufacturing are the use of bioreactors, closed system including harvest vessels and pipe work. Processes improve and ensure product quality. An option is to employ uh, advanced cultivation methods to maximize yields by controlling cell growth, virus replication or protein expression. Another advantage is the cost reduction. Once we have defined the immunity process, we have to start producing the vaccine. Vaccine production. For vaccine production, production one of the options is roller bottles. RVs are commonly used in um, low scale production or precultural steps to inoculate a small bioreactor with micro carriers. Um, they represent a relative um, low risk and to reduce the sterility risks, risks and save resources is what they do. Um, to scale up or to have a bigger production, it would be necessary to increment costs um, and also the intensity of the work required. Now, since um, that option had its disadvantages, there is also the option of static systems. Um, which are large-scale devices for static cultivation of other end cell lines. Um, they offer restricted inoculation and harvesting options, limited monitoring of pH and oxygen, limited control of cultivating parameters, and uh, what can be done is the standardization of processes and modularization of unit um, operations. An example would be Barovax produced in MRC cells and the influenza vaccines in cell weapon and BEP cell produced in Barrow cells, which can be observed in these images. Finally, um, another alter alternative would be multi-layer cultivation systems, which show a better footprint and easier handling in a large-scale production. Um, 
Some examples would be or stack devices are cell cube corning, the cell stack also corning, and cell factory and thermal scientific. Um, they all reduce incubator space and need manual handling. Um, also, they can be easily expanded and show a larger production rate. Another example would be um, the, so the um, increase of bovine RSV vaccine in the bovine cell line um, NM57 in comparison to RBs with comparable to total surface area. So, before continuing with the topic, we have to define what is a bioreactor. So, a bioreactor is defined as a vessel that makes it possible for a biological reaction to happen, and it provides the adequate conditions for the growth of cells and the generation of products. They can be glass vessels, stainless steel tanks, or they can be single-use systems. The biggest advantage of using bioreactors is that they make scaling up the process possible, and they, they may also be scaled down so as to conduct optimization experiments. And there are various types of reactors and operation modes as, as we are going to explain later. So uh, we can produce vaccines in batch mode. So batch mode for bioreactors is a method where the culture is not continuous and it is regarded as the simplest method to grow both adherent and suspension cell lines. Uh, it requires low instrumental and operational intervention. It, it, it gives very good virus yields and it, and it has a high nutrient consumption. So therefore there is less medium waste. Vaccines can be produced with batch mode. Batch mode operation is not continuous and it is regarded as the simplest method to grow both adherent and suspension cell lines. It requires low instrumental and operational intervention. It grants very good virus yield and high nutrient consumption, and therefore there is less medium waste. And intensification of this production through batch mode can be done through fed batch and perfusion systems. A way in which we can intensify the production of vaccines through batch mode is through the use of microcarriers. Microcarriers are porous or non-porous beads made from glass, plastic, or dextran, and they serve as anchorage surface for adherent cells. Some examples of cells that can anchor to these microcarriers are the Vero and MRC5. It serves to create quasi-suspension conditions, and it has higher yields when compared with static systems. One of the advantages of using microcarriers is that it allows easy separation of media from the cells. And a way in which we can achieve this is by lowering the agitation so we can allow the sedimentation of the beads. Uh, it is often employed with fed batch strategies. And one of the drawbacks of these systems is the requirement for high cell numbers. And also there is there's difficulties for recovering intracellular products. Also, when using microcarriers, there are some media that require to be complemented with addition factors so as to allow the cells to, to adhere to the surface of the microcarriers. An alternative to the use of microcarriers is the use of packed bed bioreactors. An advantage of using packed bed bioreactors is that they protect cells from mechanical stress. These bioreactors have porous polyester microfabric carriers in their surfaces to provide larger surface areas. An example of such bioreactors is the iCellis 1000, and it provides an area of 1000 square meters to a 25 liter volume. It requires lower initial cell numbers and it helps to allow high cell concentrations later in the process. It relies on perfusion and they can be also acquired as disposable vessels. So they are kind of advantageous in that sense. 
They, however, do present some difficulties for the removal of cells from the surface. So they are not as recommended when the goal of the process is just to, to, to generate seeds for further processes. Now, talking about batch cultivation of suspension cells, bioreactors in cell culture-derived vaccine production are mainly operated in this continuous batch cultivation mode. This operation mode constitutes the simplest method to grow adherent and suspension cell lines to manufacture a desired product. The process intensification in suspension cultures, there are several strategies to optimize and modify batch cultivations maintaining suspension cells in laboratory scale. Although new technologies are intensively investigated, most intensification processes could not yet find broad application in commercial production. As the global human vaccine market is expected to grow in the next five years with an annual rate of 10 to 15 percent, there is a demand for continued process development and process intensification. Private investors and governments have a great interest in vaccine production in continuous mode because continuous bioreactors corporations aim to improve manufacturing by increasing process efficiency and plant utilization and to implement automated process control when maintaining flexibility and product quality. Vaccine production in continuous mode can be derived into four main types. The first of them are the other cells on microcarriers. This method is characterized by growing other cells like Vero routinely on microcarriers in quasi-suspension conditions maintained in standard bioreactors with low agitation speed or in wave bioreactors with appropriate rocking motion. Microcarrier materials are typically porous, microporous or non-porous beds made of glass, plastic or dextran. Now, the other end cells impact bed bioreactor is an alternative system to microcarrier suspension cultures which uses disposable fixed bed systems or packed bed systems which protect other end cells against mechanical stress. Such cultivation vessels typically rely on highly porous polyester microfiber carriers or discs delivering very large surface matrices. Talking about the batch cultivation of suspension cells, we can say that our suspension cell lines generated through an adaptation process where other end cells lose their anchorage dependence by occasional mutation so that the new cell lineage starts to proliferate freely in medium. Furthermore, like quasi-suspension culture with microcarriers, suspension cultures are amenable for process automation as well as for easy regulation and control of optimized conditions, resulting in being the current choice for most large-scale biomanufacturing processes. And finally, the intensification process in suspension cultures can be highlighted by its simplest strategy for process optimization, which is the fed batch mold proving a simple feed strategy to improve cell growth, cell viability and lifetime of cells resulting in higher virus yields. However, there are the perfusion systems too, which can be used feeding fresh medium while withdrawing spent medium to achieve higher cell concentrations and extended run times beyond typical upper limits of batch and fed batch processes. Another way to produce a vaccine is through a disposable bioreactor. Single-use bioreactors are in the focus of commercial vaccine production since cultivation studies have shown comparable cell growth, kinetics, and virus recombinant protein yields for bioreactors made out of disposable plastic, compared to the ones that are made of steel. SUVs are, in theory, relatively simple to install and universally applicable by plug-and-play connections. They are replaced within the sh uh, within shortest time after the process, saving cleaning and the sterilization process while reducing cross-contamination risks. However, even though disposables are delivered with qualification tests, it, it does not eliminate the need to process validation studies.
Thank you for watching.